Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back uh, to the Johannesburg International Comedy Festival. This is the catch-up session since we've not been able to have a Johannesburg International Comedy Festival because of the Koreetis. <laughs> Brother <laughs> Carl, it's good to see you, man. It is good to see you. It's, uh, it, it's weird to see each other on these Zooms. It's uh, quite I'm gonna a strange say, thing. I'm going to be honest. It, you look clean-shaven. And for some yes. reason, that makes you look like you're well. I don't know if you're well, <laughs> but there's something about a shave that just says to the world, I'm okay. Are you okay? okay. <laughs> Dude, two days ago, two days ago, like I couldn't see my face. I, I, I decided Maybe. to become re reacquainted with my face for the first time in like 10 years. I haven't, sh I haven't shaved completely, so... It was how very does your hair? How does your hair usually grow out in terms of facial and on top? Uh, yeah, so I'm a uh, you know full full beard. Like my, my my dad, my late dad was like my personal hero. He was a comic, so yeah. he kept oh, wow. a beard. And so I always thought stand up comedy was about having a beard and a great story. And so that was <laughs> gonna be my That's beautiful. Yeah, so I covered my face, and yeah, so now it's. Um, much to the disappointment of my female fan base, who apparently <laughs> loved the ho the hobo look. <laughs> and then on top of your head, what's your hair like there? Uh, on top of my head, no hair anymore. Uh, it's um, I'm the only balding oh, guy in my family. Shucks, so I've got bro. I've got brothers with dreadlocks. Like, can you imagine? Like, that's I'm I'm just like Dude, either I'm, I'm an balding. anomaly or the or the chosen one. I'm going to go with the chosen one because, dude, under this cap, under, this is all the hair I have. And, and, and lockdown has made me have to face the fact that here. Right. Yes, that's right. It's traumatizing, Bolden. People don't understand. People with dreadlocks and full sets of hair don't understand <laughs> how, tra like, losing hair is, bruh. And don't you just hate it? Like, because when you perform, like, you perform, like, with a, with a hat on and, and stuff, right? that you know when you're filming stuff for tv and they say oh can we just lose the hat you're like no we are not losing the damn hat what is wrong with you people can't you set your lights properly i feel you completely i feel though that anxiety even in the makeup room when they're like we just need to put on can you take off your hat <laughs> no. put the makeup on top of the hat are oh, you not a professional yeah, this, this is why artists have some very strange quirks. It's like, I will not have anybody look at me directly in my eyes because you're trying to distract people from That's your hilarious. head and stuff like that. This is the reason why we're weird like that. We want pink bathrooms and we want no one in the room and chicken wings. Yeah. <laughs> Stop looking at my face. <laughs> Bro, tell me about comedy in Zim, current state of things at the moment. Yeah. Um, so there's, there's been quite a boom. <laughs> oh fuck in, really <laughs> yeah so so in zimbabwe um there isn't that uh, understanding of the difference between stand up and and skits or sketch comedy and so for the longest time what what we used to get is uh you know this clear separation of audiences who would come to the shows and expect you to be giving a theatrical performance and, and actually we get quite pissed off at that so like you find like let's say ankan sime will come to zimbabwe do a dope stand-up set but people are like no but she didn't play that character and 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 so we always had this disconnect with audiences and uh, I, i'm just going into the history which is why I, I would travel out of the country a lot to perform comedy because that's the only way i could exercise that craft though it was an expensive process but back at home the audiences were pretty limited in terms of from a comedy perspective like what people were, were expecting so a couple of things have happened, like the vernacular scene has, has taken a huge uh, leap, which is great. But now when you're you getting say, the stand-up. Sorry, sorry, Carl, when you say vernacular yeah. scene, what do you mean? Uh, yeah, so in our, uh, like our, our, our languages in Zimbabwe, so in Debele and Shona, which is why you're finding Zimbabwean comics crossing over into South Africa quite, quite well, because they can, oh, then yeah. fit in, they can then fit in into that Zulu or Kosa sort of uh, uh, scene. Uh, so, so that's been growing up a bit, but the comics have been a bit versatile in Zimbabwe in terms of now switching into sketch comedy. And so now okay. you're seeing that, that this boom happening, these little skits that are, uh, uh, that are happening. And yeah, it, it's pretty much all you've been seeing online. Why? Are you a sketch guy? Do you, are you like a purist no, 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 no. comedian wise? Yeah, or are you yeah, like, yeah. I will only do the stand up? Yeah, I'll only do the stand up. 
Yeah, I'll only do the stand-up. Like, literally, I, I used to get so many inquiries to do commercials, and I suck at acting. So, and, 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 and my, my background is in television. Like, I'm a TV director. So, yeah. I, I, I like to bring out good performances from people, but I can never bring out the best performances in myself. Oh I, my so, I, I, yeah, so I, I just... That sounds like such, a, that sounds like such a, a deep human, <laughs> like, tragedy. I can always bring out... <laughs> Stuff in <laughs> other people, but I can never bring it out of myself. Exactly, exactly. That's the hat. Like, don't look at the face. Don't look at the face. Yeah. <laughs> Shucks, bro. Now tell me, it's interesting. I want to start with the Zim South African connection before we go into your yeah. kind of experience in in comedy internationally outside of us. Is yeah. there a huge difference for you, like when you yeah. perform in Zim? And when yeah. you travel just a few hundred kilometers into Johannesburg, right. what is the difference for you, if there be any, in terms of yeah. the audience and the, and the kind of act that you have to become? Yeah, so, um, so for me, I, had to, I, I made very little adjustment performing in South Africa, mainly right. because we consume a lot of content from South Africa. We watch your soapies, we follow your personalities. Heck, we even have our really? own playing we even have our own playing in your rugby teams and the football league. So, so, so the, tra the transition... He's, you know he's ours now, eh? Yeah, he's ours, exactly. <laughs> but the World Cup belongs to us. It's our goal. It's our goal. <laughs> I hear yeah, you, but, I hear you. But, but what, what I've found about comedy, and I don't, don't know if this is true for you, is that it doesn't matter, like, especially when you're writing, because there's writing gags, right? And then... There, there's sort of observing sort of human nature and you realize we're just all the same. The same fears, the same hangups, the same stereotypes. We, we just have the same issues. There, for some reason, comedy is funny when you say how similar we are or show how different we are. So that transition going into South Africa for me was like, oh my gosh, you guys watch Isid Dingo as well. You know, it, it was a weird thing for me to, to, to be like, oh, I can, so I can say something and the people here will understand my issues, you know, so, yeah, so it, it's been quite a great thing for, for me. And I think South Africa, that's where I work. And so South Africa has helped me understand the world better from a comedy perspective, because in, in South Africa, you, um, I always say to people, when you watch Trevor Noah, great, uh, Trevor Noah has been quite a great ambassador for South African comedy. But, but when, you, when you go to South Africa, and this is what I say to all my friends, when you go to South Africa, you will understand why Trevor is great is because of that, that base of variety of comedy that, that is there, that nurtures or yeah, realize the secret source is actually in South Africa. So, so like, like right now, America is raving about Trevor, but the minute they step into South Africa, they're like, oh my God, the Cape Town scene. Oh, dude, yes. oh what the, is happening in Joburg? You know, that right. kind of thing. It's a, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's, that makes me feel nice. Keep to I feel like yeah. I must keep talking. <laughs> I haven't heard, because I haven't heard comedy talk in so long, so you are reminding me that I am a comedian. I'm like, oh, yes, yes, yeah. yes. <laughs> <laughs> And no, then no, in absolutely. terms of outside Africa, what's been yeah. your, has, it, has, it, has, that, tra has that transition from uh, Zim to South Africa, South Africa, rest of the world, has that kind of yeah. held true or have you had to, mm, yeah, so, so one of the things that's been uh, amazing for me and where I've been fortunate is that um, I remember Joe Parker booked me off a, a five-minute five clip of a one-hour video that I will never watch in my life again. It was like, because when I started comedy, I started with a full-on one-man show, oh, 800 wow. people in an auditorium. That's my first gig. So, Shut up, bro. What do you mean? Yeah, yeah as in like, I decided like I was going to do, cause I thought that's what you do. I'd watched Trevor Noah, uh, Daywalker. And I was like, mm -hmm. Oh, that's what a comic does. You break out by doing a one man show. I didn't understand that the one man show is the thesis of your career, so, yes. so to speak. Uh, so, so I started on the wrong foot. And so what, what, what Joe did well was to educate me on how to start to say, listen, you, you, because I was like, why am I not headlining? I'm the biggest thing in Zimbabwe, you know, that nah, kind of thing. And Joe would be like, no, he's like, no, there's a ladder. This is what you do. And so it, it allowed me to understand my place, especially when traveling abroad. So when I was traveling abroad, I'd then say stuff like, listen, I'm a Zim comic. 
looking for some stage time. I want to tell a Zim story. Five minutes if you if you'll have me. Yeah. And what we did is I picked countries that could relate. Because remember, I was talking about the connection with South Africa. Yeah. I then picked countries that could relate. So we did a list. My wife and I, we did a list of um, countries where they've had a president for more than 30 years. Wow. And those are the first countries we went to. Be because when I talked about Mugabe, they would understand completely. Wow, dude, that's such... That level of, that level of, of uh, detail sounds amazing. <laughs> it, it was survival. It was survival because the issue was, I, I, you know, the, the thing is you always think, oh, I want to make it big. I want to go to America. I want to do this, right? But it, you, you have to start with stage time. You have to start with understanding the world and the mechanics of this, of this craft. And so working in countries where censorship is high improves your writing in a way because you, 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 you kind of learn how to navigate funny. Yeah. So yeah, I just wanted okay. you to explain that, that, uh, that concept because it's yeah. like I'm thinking in terms of comedy, like yeah. the, major, the major comedy hubs in the world are pretty liberal countries. So yeah. we don't get the, we don't understand what you say when you, say that the more, <laughs> pressed, the more pressed the people, the better the writing? Yeah. Is that what you... Yeah, yeah well, for, for me, I think um, I, I used it as a challenge because one of the things is that we used to have a comedian called Edgar Langefeld in, in Zimbabwe, and he used to get beaten up proper every single time when he went yes. out to do, to do comedy. Um, and so when I started doing stand-up comedy, it had literally died. So there wasn't any comedy wow. happening in the, in the country. Um, for me... Um, when I came from an advertising background, the issue was that uh, my dad was a comedian. So I'm a second generation comic. So I wanted to manage my, my dad, but That's he was so too dope. afraid to, yeah, he was too afraid to do it. And, and the reason why he was afraid was because at the functions where he would do comedy, a lot of people didn't know that he was making these Mugabe jokes and so on. And so censorship was at the top of the business plan to say, how are we going to deal with it? And so when I, when I did my first gig to show my dad, cause you were scared to do it. When I did my first gig, um, I remember the, the guys from Gabe's security came to me and uh, long and short of it, they said, listen, we love what you do. We love what you do. But uh, in future, please don't make fun of the president. Don't make fun of the first lady. Don't make fun of the first family. Please don't That's talk about so any crazy. government officials. Don't talk about any foreign diplomats. Don't bring up race. Don't talk about our history. Don't talk about service delivery issues. Don't talk about water power, electricity, potholes. But Carl, <laughs> just keep it social. <laughs> and, 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 and so the, the thing was, the thing was, I remember at that time just getting this thing in my head that what if my comedy was about my fear of talking about the things that I want to talk about as opposed to talking about the things. And so now the, the, the jokes were now about the fear of Robert Mugabe as opposed to making fun of Robert Mugabe. And so you, you started finding the comedy sector growing in Zimbabwe. Almost to the extent that, if you remember, now we've had more South African comics perform in Zimbabwe than we've ever had. And part of this reason is that in the beginning, if you wanted to do a show, you had to be interviewed by the police before the show even happened. They wanted to see your script. Now, Carl, what are you yeah. talking about, bro? <laughs> it's, it's insane. Like, if I tell you, I, I always say to people, I have to do 100 things before I go on stage. Like, uh, for example, I have to... Uh, speak to the, the guys in the central intelligence sort of uh, uh, set up. Uh, a lot of them are comedy fans. So I've, I've had to put them in my jokes. Like I've got this character called Agent 263, who's like a glorified Zimbabwean secret uh, agent trying to save the world, but with limited resources. <laughs> and, and so... Oh, that's funny. Yeah. So, so you, 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 always, you always had to, you always had to change the message. And which is why... For me, when I was now traveling around the world, I started going to like Southeast Asia because that's where you have these emperors who have been in power for 30, 30, 40 years, that kind of thing. And so when you're talking about Robert Mugabe, people there are not allowed to laugh at the emperor. They would mm. laugh at the Mugabe jokes as though... So, so now you're emperor. replacing... Exactly. And, and that's, that's basically... Uh, and, and that's helped me quite, quite a bit. So even when I was doing... Uh, when I did a TED Talk, the TED talk was that um, our sense of humor is not, uh, our sense of humor is not a sign that we're happy, but it's a sign that we're afraid because humor is, a, is an escape from fear. 
It's why comics do so well. It's because of the fear of speaking to people. Gee, say that again for the people to hear <laughs> it again. You Zimbabwean comic, you. That <laughs> is we so... Selector? No, dude, because I, that is very unique, bro. That, that's an insight that I can never get because right. I just am not in that environment. And that's most right. comics in all the world. So this is right. blowing my mind, what you say. Right. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it, it's, it's, a, it's a question now of just survival. It's like, why do, you, why do you go across the border to perform in South Africa? That's because, it's, you know, you, you'll die as a comic if you, don't, if you don't perform in South Africa. If you don't, and I think that the most valuable thing is not actually the gig, it's the other comics. It's that five minutes backstage. It's seeing Tatsun Gonzo before he goes on stage. It's, uh, it's seeing Tatsun Gonzo performing musical comedy, but then he's like, oh, but he can do that without the, the guitar. So using different like, tools and seeing how people have been building their careers. Because back at home, you don't have that template. So all of you are mentors to like, um, it, it's why I always say, um, South African comedy, th there's a difference. If you look at comedy in Nigeria and you look at comedy in South Africa, um, it, it's two different types of industries, right? It's uh, two different types of comedy that, that are happening. But I, I would love to see an expansion more of the South African comedy circuit happen over Africa. Because to some extent... <coughs> sorry. <coughs> yeah, sorry. Oh, sorry, continue, continue, because you were going to probably yeah. answer. But, but I was just like, I don't know what that means. What it... When yeah. you say the difference and when you say yeah. you wish that whatever it is we have here could, could, could go, travel, yeah. But yeah. what is it that we have? Because I think because we're in it, we're in it, yeah. we don't know. Right. I, the, okay, so the main thing is that the comedy circuit is what builds comics, the comedy clubs, you know, the, you know, uh, uh, the comedy night, like at, at Kitchener's when you're, you know, coming up with new material, there's the open mic nights, the... You know, there's these showcase nights, then there's the theater shows, and then there's the, the one-man shows, the specials, the tours. All these things happen in South Africa. However, in, in let's say, the, the other biggest market for comedy, which is Nigeria, there isn't going to be much of a growth in the comics because they'll always maintain having the same big stars and big shows, getting big money, doing the big theater shows, but not really fostering this idea that a young comic can go on a tour of Africa, for example. So, so here's the next conversation. Comedy then allows us, because we have access to, to power in a way, we have access to government officials and so on, the new conversation should be that it should be a lot cheaper for comics to travel in SADC, because then you'll grow the circuit much bigger. It, it, it's, it, you know, instead of having the Goliath uh, Comedy Club in South Africa, it should be a franchise right across it. Uh, fuck. Because yeah, right. the, because that if we... Yeah, because if we keep up with this notion that Netflix is going to come and save us or Comedy Central is going to save us, all they're going to do is sell us more of their comedy. And that's what's happening, is that we then become more grateful that, oh, the Americans have come to us. Like, we don't have a story. We, we are not the gatekeepers. We are not the guys who are, who are running the things here. We are not mm. the guys who are building the comics here. Mm. We've already... We've already given you Trevor Noah. We've given, we've given you <laughs> Lois Okola. We've given you all of these guys. And we've, we've shown you that Africa, Africa is not inferior, not from, not from a comedy perspective, not that we need an international act to justify a right. show to make it sound like it's big. Talk to them now. We, yeah, we already have the big stars here. It's the reason why we bring in a South African comic from uh, into Zimbabwe. The shows will sell out because Zimbabweans want to also hear the African narrative. They would rather Dude. pay more for the South African comic than for yeah. let's say an American one. That's so interesting, my friend. It's interesting because I, 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 I think it's two things. As South African acts, we don't see our value like that in yeah. terms of in terms of um, in terms of any other eyes outside of America and and the UK. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Maybe yeah. maybe Australia. Right. We don't know how anybody else sees us because, yeah. because those spaces just aren't comedy spaces. So it's very interesting right. to hear you say that. And what yeah. a question that I wanted to ask you is, it's so crazy because I'm thinking as if I was a young act in Zimbabwe and yeah. everything that you've just told me that right. you have to do to run a show, right? Yeah. I mean, a young comic probably doesn't know that you have to go through all of that. Right. 
So what is what is what has been your relationship like been like with the younger acts? Because in my head, yeah. my 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 uh, what do you call my negative head? I'm thinking because they don't know the information. There's yeah. a lot of room for disrespect and a lot of room right. for kind of unacknowledging the work. Yeah. What has been your experience I, I, with with like younger younger up and coming ambitious okay. acts? Yeah, I, I think I think a lot of the times I've uh, probably had to play a more big brother disciplinarian role in the in the sector, understanding what my role is. So, for example, um, uh, trying to make sure that the the comics are always encouraged by what I'm doing, which is why I share the intricacies of what I'm doing on social media, so that they don't have to ask me. Because a, a lot of the times, you see, comics won't approach you. Uh, you know, so it's better to put that information out there. Um, Behind the scenes, I do a lot of their posters. Um, I try to change how they look at themselves from a branding perspective. I do a lot of workshops via WhatsApp and, and so on so that we can discuss uh, uh, issues. Right now, there's um, a comedy outfit uh, that's called Simuka Comedy, which basically is there to just represent being like uh, Simuka, Simuka Comedy. So Simuka, Simuka means, yeah, it means stand. Uh, so basically, Simuka. it's the Shona words for stand, yeah. Simuka, um, Simuka. Simuka, yeah, exactly. So, so Simuka Comedy is there as, uh, so when a youngster comes to me and says, I want to do comedy, I, I will tell them, prepare your five minutes, go to the next uh, Simuka show, expect to not be paid for probably half your life until you will know when you're good. You will know when you're good. Because I, you, the thing is, I have to stamp out this sense of entitlement that a lot of these youngsters don't understand that, listen, you're going to have to sweat it out. If, if you're funny, you're just going to get paid. Now, that's what that's what happens, and I've mm. seen it happen in South Africa a lot. You see, uh, like five new acts in a show, and then there's that one really yeah. exciting act that comes up, and then all of a sudden, the industry has a way. It will it will just embrace you. You Dude, trust nothing me if you're funny. Nothing travels faster than a a good joke in yeah. this industry. Absolutely, it, it will get it will get to now. Fuck if it's a if it's a great set. Yeah. Yeah, you, 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 you're going to, you're right, you're going to move to that next level, even if that next level is being paid or middle spot or headlining. Yeah. But I hear you, or opening for someone. Exactly. Because the, the principle, it, it, I, like I went to um, New York to this uh, American Comedy Institute. Yeah. And so the American Con Comedy Institute is this guy called Steven Rosenfeld, who's like a, he's a comedy writer. He, he, he like edits jokes. Comics come sit in front of him and they pay him to, uh, like, he's the kind of guy who says the word 17 is not as funny as 16. Right. Uh, you know, I would yeah. prefer that you get mugged by three guys instead of six. You know, so it's something you. funny about that. And, yes. and so he's, he's got this course that he does. But the one thing that I, I remembered about his, the course is the first thing that he tells you is that in comedy, it's about getting good, then you get seen, and then you get paid. And that happens in that order. There's no way of running away from it. So you get good, you get seen, you get paid. So the getting mm. good is, under, is understanding how to get your laugh ratio to a minimum of like four laughs a minute, minimum. And then you can start working from there, right? Uh, because you're not gonna get booked at anything less than four, four laughs a minute. Because a lot of the bookers in New York are not listening to the material. They're just yeah, listening they, to how, how, yeah, the how much- The decibels in the room, what's happening? Ex exactly. And then the getting seen is just getting to every single gig because chances are people are going to, they're going to book you. Like in, in Zimbabwe, the main thing is that Carl gets booked because he's good at designing, he's good at this marketing thing. And I'm like, dude, marketing will get you your first gig. If you screw it up on stage, you're not getting any other gig after that. Yes, ever again, yes. Yeah. That's it doesn't matter so... how good you are at the marketing. Dude, that's, you, like, you're bringing such a great perspective and an insight in not only like the value of, I guess, the, the South African comedy industry and the yeah. value of things like Johannesburg International Comedy Festival, oh, yeah. but, but an, an insight that I think the world doesn't know in terms of how the fuck it works in a country like Zim. So yeah. appreciate that, you, that you're sharing yeah. that stuff. And I, 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 I'm, I'm excited about people hearing it. Like it's not just, because <laughs> it's not just, write a joke, get on stage, laugh. That's a very, yeah. like for the first time I'm saying this, that's a very privileged process. Cause right. now when you tell me this, I'm like, now nah, I gotta know agents, 
and I gotta know <laughs> government government officials. Government I'm officials. Assuming, I'm assuming you have to show them your your um, script or what you intend to do. Zimbabwe yeah. sounds doing a gig in Zimbabwe sounds like doing a corporate. Dude, it, where it's, you can uh, get killed. It's it, it's been worse for me because like I can't be the. I can't be the comic I want to be because the role that I have is very different. Like right now, I'm having to engage the tourism sector, writing strategy oh, documents that man. will open up comedy clubs to exist. Because currently, to bring in a comic into Zimbabwe costs 1,000 US dollars that's paid to the government in tax alone. So that's the work permits and the taxes and so on. So if I wanted to start a comedy club and I just wanted Tats to just come and like, you know, come on holiday and do like a circuit, you're never going to do that in Zimbabwe. So wow. we, we then have to do a theater show. And a lot of the times the theater shows, yeah, it's great for the comic, but every single promoter who's done a theater show right now with any comic who's come into the country has gone out of business Shit. because the cost was just too big. They just couldn't replicate it. They couldn't duplicate it. It's exhausting and they get out of business. Get quit, Carl. That's yeah. my question. <laughs> my, no, that's my question. Why not quit? Yeah. Why yeah, so, not quit? I, I think there's a lot more, I, I, I don't know, there's, there's a thing that drives me about just seeing this. I, I've seen it, Tats. I've, I've, like, I've literally seen it. I've seen comedy clubs across Africa, a comedy circuit where someone from America can make a fortune traveling in Africa from country to country playing the clubs, right? And that's the new form of revenue. And at the center of it, I see the African comics being the ones who own the TV stations. The, they're the ones who, I see TV channels, like, for me, I don't understand the model with the, I, I, I don't mean to sort of crap on the Netflixes and whatever it is, but for me, for me, the, the future of comedy is to treat comedy like MTV, which is to take the five minute clip and put it on a channel the same way that MTV played music. Group the comedy according to your mama jokes, and political jokes and so on and put it into a platform because that's how people will consume it. But not only that, comics can grow. I don't have the pressure of having to put up an hour special. You, you know it, Touch. You've heard a comic give you a solid good five minutes in the beginning, then shit on the other 15 minutes of their set. But you know there was a good five minutes there. You know there was a good five minutes. And there's a lot of golden five minutes that are lost. They're lost forever. We're never going to hear them. Like, like comics have been discouraged because of this model of saying you're only going to be in the media if, if we give you a one-man show. And I think that is not the right way to look at it. Thanks for, your, <laughs> thanks for, thanks for being here, as in like, no. you know, like no. giving of yourself and your, and your heart and, your, and the information. It really, I appreciate that. And, uh, Thank you I want so to, much. It's great. Now the world must hear this shit, man, because stand up, stand up is uh, is all over the world, but it's not the same. Um, yeah. I think that's that's the heart of the Joburg International Comedy Festival is to show off all the different styles. But what I'm loving about this is that yeah. it's showing off all the different environments as well. Yeah, because that's yeah, also part I, of the thing. You know what I mean? I, th I think one of the things that I, I loved about about JICF was, was exactly that was to watch an an Italian comic, you know, mm -hmm. uh, sh show you that like not speaking English properly, yeah, uh, and, and just and just turning it on its on its head completely, you know, like French comics and Canadian yeah. comics and South African comics and Zimbabweans and you know, it's nice because Zimbabweans get work there. That's <laughs> It's excellent. <laughs> my brother, have a good rest of the day, my man. Thank you so much for coming through.